Politico released a new article that is um, infuriating. Because this article is about Bill Clinton and Tony Blair, two neoliberal goals that I wish would just go away forever, don't want to hear anything about what they have to say. But, you know, this article stood out to me because they're going to very patronizingly and condescendingly offer advice to leftists in the UK and America because obviously we failed. Corbyn's movement failed. Bernie's movement failed. We don't have power. We're out of power. So from two individuals, two former leaders who had power... They're going to tell us lefties what we need to do to stop losing. As John F. Harris writes, Bill Clinton and Tony Blair no longer have power, but they still have advice. They perceive plenty of people in need of it. The needy include progressives in the United Kingdom, where the Labour Party has not had power in a long while, and the United States, where the Democratic Party has power for now, but looks likely to lose lots of it in midterm elections this fall. Together, they offered a fitness program of sorts for members of their own parties that they fear are getting badly out of shape. Clinton urges progressives to rebuild atrophied muscles muscles of persuasion. I think one of the ways you win elections is by talking straight with people and giving them permission to vote against you, he explains in the most recent edition of his podcast. In other words, don't hector and moralize as though the merits of your position should be self-evident to any decent person. Assume a position of modesty that argues if you really disagree with this, then you will go out and take another choice, but here's why I think it's better for you. Blair urges progressives to rebuild atrophied muscles of self-discipline. For much of the left, Blair said on Clinton's program, it's not clear that their main goal is really to win power or wield it. Its primary purpose is to make itself feel good about itself, right? To convince itself that it's principled, right? But that is in the end something that leads you to self-indulgence. Unless progressives commit to reclaiming the center in culture wars, Blair added, they'll remain vulnerable to some loose remark by someone being exploited by the right and will be hammered day in and day out. That's just not competent politics. Okay. So uh, when it comes to Bill Clinton's advice, it's hollow and vapid because progressives have already won. I can't speak for the UK, but here in the United States, we've already persuaded Americans. Most of them support Medicare for all, tuition-free public colleges and universities. $15 an hour minimum wage. Student debt cancellation. The problem is that party leadership won't get the fuck out of the way. When we start to actually build real power individuals from the Democratic Party, former leaders, step in and they crush it. Obama in 2020 decided to make some phone calls to centrist Democrats to get them to drop out in order to endorse Joe Biden so that way they're no longer splitting the votes and Bernie wouldn't win. In 2016, Bill Clinton, uh, you know, he was fighting for Hillary Clinton who had the DNC working on her behalf to destroy Bernie Sanders. I mean, just watch this 2018 clip from C-SPAN where um, there's a little bit of a message at the end that Bill Clinton had for Tom Perez when he became the new DNC chair in 2017. Uh, the DNC is unpopular with its own base. Uh, they're half of the Democratic Party or roughly half the Democratic Party felt like the DNC was unfairly tipping the scales in the last uh, presidential election, trying to get uh, Hillary Clinton nominated, trying to hurt Bernie Sanders. So you start with that bad blood. And really, there's just been a clash between these two sides that has resumed. The hostilities that had been put aside at the Democratic Convention in 2016 resumed the minute that Donald Trump was elected. This huge battle for the soul of the Democratic Party between uh, the, the Clinton-type folks and the Sanders folks. And Tom Perez is in the middle of that, and he's gotten very explicit instructions from President Clinton, as we write in the in the paperback extension of the the original book, uh, he's got instructions for Bill Clinton not to let the party go to the Bernie Sanders folks. Interesting. So the DNC uses its institutional advantages to crush progressives, and then Bill Clinton says, "You should just persuade people better." How do we persuade people, specifically politicians in power, when they're bought and paid for by the industries who we want to go after? How do you convince a corporate Democrat that Medicare for all is the way to go when they've been bought and paid for by the health insurance industry? Back in 2019, there was a Vox article that explained how the health insurance industry was betting on Joe Biden as their savior because Bernie Sanders was gaining too much momentum and he wanted Medicare for all. How do you compete with this much money? Now, as vapid as Bill Clinton's so-called advice was, Tony Blair was much more patronizing. And sure, it's true that you could find some lefties on Twitter 
who, you know, they try to purify themselves into oblivion and say, well, I'm the real leftist, you're not lefty enough. But I mean, that's really a small minority of even the online left. I think that most lefties don't really care about that. They want to build coalitions. They want to make sure that they expand the number of people who support them. But really, if you read the subtext there, what Tony Blair is saying, especially when he talks about how, you know, the left is getting clowned on because of culture war issues, he's basically saying you should uh, become TERFs. I mean, he's from Turf Island. So he wants you to abandon trans people, just ignore LGBTQ plus issues, basically become not even a class reductionist, but just appeal to the right more. And that's how you win. But yet he says this while also we learned that the Labour Party was trying to crush people who supported Jeremy Corbyn. When uh, Jeremy Corbyn was party leader, we learned that internally they're trying to sabotage him at every step of the way. So it's just it's astonishing to me that you have these former leaders who um, they try to crush progressives. And then they pretend as if, you know, oh, well, you just haven't persuaded them enough and you're not marketing yourself enough. Meanwhile, they work against progressives at the behest of conservatives. And really, this whole radical centrism that they're proposing is why we're in this current state, right? Let me remind you that Bill Clinton decided to bring up third-way politics, which means Democrats embraced neoliberalism. Now, neoliberalism was basically a Republican thing mostly, right? There were some neoliberal Democrats before the, uh, the uh, Clinton era, but Ronald Reagan made free market politics, hypercapitalism, neoliberalism so popular that the only way the Democrats felt that they could win elections again was if they just appealed to the right. Now, they marketed themselves as centrists, but in actuality, when they governed Bill Clinton, he just did what the right wing wanted. He signed the Defense of Marriage Act into law, which banned gay marriages federally. And that was the compromise because the right wanted a constitutional amendment to marriage equality, to ban it, to be clear. And Clinton was like, well, what if we just ban it federally? Oh, well, what a great compromise, throwing gay people under the bus. He signed Don't Ask, Don't Tell into law. He signed welfare reform into law that uh, fucked over people who were poor. My family at the time needed that, and we were fucked over because of Bill Clinton. I remember my parents complaining about this new law and them hating Bill Clinton at that point after previously supporting him. Bill Clinton signed NAFTA into law. So this whole third way politics has led to the situation where neoliberalism is the default position of both parties, where instead of offering public solutions to public problems, well, we offer private solutions rather than just increasing funding for education. Well, why don't we outsource that to corporations? Let them make the money off of education. Let the, you know, healthcare insurance companies uh, make money off of us instead of offering healthcare to people. So this politics has destroyed the UK and the US. And so, you know, they pretended to be solutions to the problems of Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan. But all they did was expand those problems and turn their entire party into mini Reagan machines. So they're why we're in this predicament currently. And they have the audacity to say, oh, well, you're just not being centrist enough. Well, you're being too fucking right wing. OK, you're being too right wing. And sure, it is the case that labor has shifted to the right over the years, like the Democratic Party in some respects. But the Democratic Party compared to the conservative party in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the UK even. I mean, they're kind of ideologically similar to them. We don't really have a left-wing party in the United States. And that's because Tony Blair and Bill Clinton crushed the left so they can gain power. And they didn't govern from the center. They govern from the right. And they don't want the Democratic Party and the Labour Party to govern from the left, which is why their parties fight tooth and nail to crush these movements. So um, we don't need your advice. Save your advice. Shove it up your asses. Just fuck off. And, and for Tony Blair, I should ask, why haven't you turned yourself in yet for crimes against humanity? Of course, he's sorry for the Iraq war, but sorry isn't going to bring back those lives. So I don't want to hear from these fucking neoliberal dipshits. We don't want your advice. Save it. Honestly, if you want to help the left, if you're genuinely concerned about the left not succeeding, which they're not, but if you were... You can step the fuck aside and let us take power. 
but you won't do that. You'll fight us tooth and nail. And when we build movements, you try to crush those movements. And you know that this helps the right, but you don't care because you're more of a right winger in both parties, Tony Blair and Bill Clinton. They're both right wingers more than they are centrists.